So a little bit ago, I made a video answering some questions about Squid Game, and some people thought it was fine. And recently, I've been hearing more questions about the show. Some really good questions. Questions that need to be answered. So I figured we should go round two and do another questions answered video. So let's get started. But before we get started, I got a whole bag of spoilers in this video, so just keep that in mind. Also, this video is sponsored by Exter, a smart wallet brand that's focused on making minimalistic and efficient wallets. If you use promo code Bryce or click on this link in the description below, you can get up to 40% off on their website. Anyway, what were we talking about in the video? Now let's begin. Will there be a Squid Game Season 2? Yes. The writer, director, and creator of the series, Huang Dong Yao, confirmed that Season 2 is gonna happen. Specifically saying that Sung Woo went to SNU and there will indeed be a second season, and that it's currently in the planning process. But it's too early to say how and when it's going to happen. But it's never too early to say that Sung Woo graduated first in a class, and is the golden child of Sangmundong. What kind of games can we expect to be in Season 2? I'm answering this question under the assumption that they don't pull a Hunger Games or a Battle Royale, where the series no longer focuses on the games, and instead turns into a story about taking down their dystopian government. We end Season 1 a year after Gihun won Squid Game 2020, when the salesman is recruiting more players for Squid Game 2021. So it's safe to assume that no matter what Gihun is going to do, there will be nothing in the way of the organization to stop the from having Squid Game 2021. So when and if Gihun makes his way back to the games, it'll be when the 2021 games are in progress. This is an elongated way of me saying that we're getting more games. The VIPs not knowing what kind of game they would be watching in Episode 7, as well as the VIPs needing the frontman to explain the rules of Squid Game to them in Episode 9, tells us that the organization does not repeat the same games every year. We see that the main reason they present the VIPs with new games is to add variety and excitement. So when Sung Gihun is going through the list of games. He lists Dokchi, Dabangu, Hopscotch, Bizokchiki, Tag, Donkatsu, Freeze Tag, Cat's Cradle, Kongi, and Elastics. Tag would be intense. That game would give off true Battle Royale vibes more than any other kids game they could pick. This one wasn't mentioned, but Hide and Seek would also be insane, as it would turn the games into more of a slasher. Almost all of the games Sung Gi-hoon mentions were never used in Season 1, so they could easily be used for Squid Game Season 2. I I don't know if children's games are common with Squid Game, or with anyone else hosting a Squid Game in another country. Because the reason the games in Squid Game 2020 were children's games is because they were modeled after Number One's childhood, as that was something he wanted to relive. So the games future participants play in Squid Game 2021, for example, don't necessarily have to be children's games. Like that makes sense, right? However, in an interview with Variety, the director, writer, and creator of Squid Game, Huang Dong Yao, gave us his reasoning for choosing children's games in the first place. Explaining, as a survival game, it is entertainment and human drama. The games portrayed are extremely simple and easy to understand. That allows viewers to focus on the characters, rather than being distracted by trying to interpret the rules. This was the smartest decision he could have made. Most audience members already knew how to play the games, or were quick to pick up on how to play them, as they are simple and easy to learn. Practically speaking, it makes sense that they would stick with children's games moving forward, as having simpler games adds to the show's watchability when it comes to pleasing a global audience, which was the goal from the start, as Squid Game was made to be more accessible to Western audiences. Plus, thematically, the show at its heart is about growing up and losing your innocence, and subsequently your happiness when you enter an overly competitive capitalist system that is made to work against you. So obviously, it's a cool aesthetic with blending the innocence of playgrounds and honeycomb candies with people getting brutally shot to death by uh, men with guns. But the purpose of this juxtaposition reflects on what the show is trying to say. The point point that I'm trying to make is that the next games in Season 2 will most likely be children's games. But like the players and the VIPs, we have no way of knowing what they'll be, unless somebody leaks a script. In Red Light Green Light, were automatic machines shooting at the players, or was it the guards? Yes. As in yes, the guards were shooting at the players. I watched Squid Game at normal speed, and I caught this shot right here, where if we bump up the brightness, we can see a magenta uniform of what appears to be a triangle guard shooting at the players. The automated robot detects when the player are moving and identifies who needs to go, but it's up to the triangles to eliminate the players, which is really telling at how accurate and well-trained the triangle guards are. You'd think that it would be an automatic system based on the precision of the bullets. By the way, the barrels of the guards' guns are extended with silencers, a nice little detail that explains why the sounds of the gunshots don't interfere with the sound of the little girl saying red light green light. If someone was highlighted red during red light green light but still managed to cross the line, would they be safe? 
sadly, no. I don't necessarily know the caliber of rifle the guards were using, but one hit was enough to knock a participant down to the ground. But even if a wounded participant who was caught moving during red light somehow managed to make their way past the line, another guard would simply aim their weapon in that player's direction and execute them. The same way the guards hunted down player 278 when he tried to run away after he lost in the marble game. This was the main benefit to having an automatic system identify the players and humans take them out, just so the guards can make sure that every player who got eliminated is eliminated in their definition of the word. Was the little girl death robot real? Heck yeah, she was. I think it's really awesome how they use practicals on location when filming this scene. One of the reasons why she could appear CGI in the final product is because her eyes are obviously CGI, and they must have tweaked with the footage of her turning her head. Like how on the day of shooting, when the head finishes the turn, it didn't stop as smoothly as they wanted. But in the editing process, they tweaked the head so it would come to a very precise and smooth stop. But I kind of like that artificial aspect of the head movement. Just adds a little bit more to how off-putting the scene is. Could Squid Game end in a tie? The only previous Squid Game champion we've seen is the frontman, who won back in 2015. So we don't have too much information supporting the theory that the game could end with multiple players leaving with the prize money. However, it's implied that the facility would never let Squid Game end in a tie with multiple people splitting the money. In Squid Game, the closest thing you can get to a tie is the majority of players calling a vote and deciding to end the games. But in this case, no one gets the prize money and everyone goes home with nothing. Outside of the planned games, the organization allowed contestants to kill each other in the main room, but only to the point where there was a proper number of players left for the next game. This is why the guards directly interfered with the games by knocking gi -hun to the ground after he tried to attack as the new graduate Sung Woo. They broke up the fight between gi -hun and Sung Woo, knowing that they needed the two of them alive to compete in the last game, and why they let Se Biao die, so there would be balanced teams and two people wouldn't win the games technically. The idea of multiple players winning and making it out of the facility was as hopeless as Sung Woo's totally legitimate plan to save himself and Ali during the Marvel game. Oh, there's also the fact that when we see the list of champions from every year, there is only one person listed for each year. So that's actually kind of a dead giveaway. Where is the location of the Squid Game Island? The production of Squid Game wasn't filmed on this mysterious island we see right here. It was actually filmed in parts of Seoul, Daejeon, and Seon Gapado Island. But within the show, the island the games takes place on is actually named Songbong Ri, which is located right here, southwest of Seoul. Oh, by the way, I heard a fair amount of people say that when the frontman shot Jin Ho's oxygen tank, it wasn't to destroy Jin Ho's only means of transportation off the island. It was the frontman firing a warning shot to alert Jin Ho that they had arrived. While this is a cool theory, it's not the case. The frontman wanted Jin Ho alive, and with the knowledge that the triangle guards must have amazing trigger discipline, he brought the guards to the island to capture, not kill Jin Ho. But when it came down to it, the frontman shot his brother when there was no other option left. So the reason the frontman is so confident making noise in this moment is because he knew that Jin Ho had nowhere else to go, since they were all the way over here. So it wasn't a warning shot, it was more just overkill. What the heck was in the Squid Archives? Most Western viewers, including myself who can't read Korean, probably can't read some of the papers in the archives, which makes sense. If only someone spent hours of their life translating these documents from Korean to English. Oh wait, that's me. I'm the guy with too much time on his hands. So let's quickly analyze Jin Ho's investigation through the Squid Archives. In the archives, we see the records of each competition held from 1988 to 2020. On these shelves, you can see records for the stadium CCTV data, game room construction materials, game progress videos, the list of VIPs, or potential VIPs, the list of workers and administrators, and perhaps the thing taking up the most books is the list of participants. This one says for ordination progress audio transcript. This is perhaps the most interesting cover. As we already know, there's a lot of religious subtext and metaphors throughout the series. For those of you who don't know, for ordination is God predetermining the fate of mortal beings. This being in the Squid Archives is possibly proving the fact that the games are rigged from the start. Each year has a list of every one of these things. Judging by the sheer quantity of books needed for the participant list, we can see that the list of players is growing 
growing every year. When Jinho opens up book number one of the player list for Squid Game 2020, he immediately opens up to player two, meaning player one's profile is the definition of missing, because why would the organization need a record of the host? Speaking of which, there's a lot of cool details throughout this season hinting at the fact that number one is the host. But some of the details that I haven't mentioned in my previous videos are that during the scene where everyone is getting taken back to the games, we see every main character get knocked out in the van. But the only person we don't see get knocked out is number one. I know Sabiao wasn't knocked out, but the point is we still see her. But we don't see number one until the next episode. And on the exterior of the recreation of Elam's home, you can quickly see the Squid Game symbols right here, as they're laid out the same way they appear on the cards. Now these symbols are littered throughout the facility, like how during the marble game the flags right here have the symbols on them, but this is the only structure where the symbols appear to be a substitute for the address. Anyway, back to the player profiles. The two most notable profiles we see in the Squid Archives would be the profiles that belong to player 132, you may know him as the frontman, and player 456, also known as Sungi Hoon. Let's start with 456. Now that his profile is translated by yours truly, we can see a whole bunch of information about his life, like his current job working as a chauffeur, his employment history, and how long he's been working at each job. Over here, you can see that the highest level of education he achieved was graduating high school, which is really not as impressive as someone else in his life who, you know, graduated from SNU. But to be fair, other participants also did not attend SNU. In fact, some of the other players never made it past middle school. At the bottom of gi -hun's page, it's revealed that the organization kept track of his mother, ex-wife, and daughter. When looking at the frontman's profile, you can see that he went to the police academy and spent the past couple decades serving as a police officer, something that he had in common with his brother Jin Ho. The frontman was also unemployed before he became the frontman. All the way down here, at the bottom of the frontman's profile, you can see that he was involved with bribery, implying that him accepting a bribe got him fired from the police force. When looking at the list of Squid Game champions, you can see round six at the top of the page, informing us that the organization hosts six games every year. Another thing telling us this would be right here, when Jin Ho passes six tapes containing trimmed down footage of the six games that were played in the year 1998. Jin Ho takes pictures of the participant agreements everyone signs in episode one, and these videotapes are either from the CCTV cameras or the recordings of games. I very, very roughly translated this top secret document right here, and from what I can make out, it's a non-disclosure agreement for the guards and other employees who work at the facility. What happened to the loan sharks? Before the games, gi -hun managed to get himself into some trouble with loan sharks, like owing them 160 million one kind of trouble. gi -hun couldn't afford to pay them back, so they forced him to sign over one of his kidneys if he didn't get them the money by next month. In episode 8, gi -hun tells Sabiao that the first thing he would do if he got the prize money would be paying off his debt, and that's why we never see the shark loans again, as gi -hun had to pay them off right away, otherwise he would literally lose a kidney. Paying them off was pretty easy for him to do, since the prize money was immediately put into his new account when he returned to Seoul, and he only spent about a week in the games, so he had more than enough time to pay off the loan sharks. Are we the VIPs? As in, are the VIPs a reflection of us, the audience, watching Squid Game for our own entertainment? This is a great theory, knowing that in other stuff like in Glory Bastards and Black Mirror, for example. Every time you see an audience, you can bet your bottom dollar that what you're watching is commenting on how we, the audience, view certain things within our society. In this case, the VIPs are indulging with watching the poor fight in the games for their entertainment. And in a sense, so are we. I feel like this is going to be more of a subjective answer, but I'm going to go ahead and say no. We are not the VIPs. The VIPs being treated like caricatures definitely dehumanizes them beyond belief and creates too much separation between them and the audience. In fact, the VIPs have more commonalities with the players, like how gi -hun has a gambling addiction at the horse racing tracks, and the VIPs bet on the players during every game, or how gi -hun was a big man-child, and how the VIPs thought 69 was the funniest thing to ever happen to humanity. But most importantly, how both gi -hun and the VIPs find no pleasure from their lives, even if they have more money than they could ever need. When gi -hun plays the seventh game with number one in the Sky Building, it's clear that this scene 
scene is mirroring the scene where the VIPs look down at Gi-hoon and Sung-woo playing Squid Game. But as we know, the seventh game restores Gi-hoon's faith in humanity and prevents him from fully going down a similar path as the VIPs or the frontman. We are not the ones on the same level as the VIPs. It was Gi-hoon who was almost brought down to their level. Now, let's quickly talk about today's sponsor, Exter. So they sent me a couple of wallets, and the wallet that I liked the most was the Parliament wallet. I got it in Juniper Green, and it's pretty rad. And my favorite part about this wallet is probably this. It's like, I'm never gonna get sick of that. On this wallet alone, we got a money clip, sleeves on the front and back that give me more than enough room to store my Squid Game invitations, and this really satisfying way to take out the cards. Currently, this wallet is smaller and holds way more cards than any of my other wallets. Exter also sells this really easy to use tracker that's in the shape of a debit card. You can connect it to your phone to track its location using Chipolo, or if you're like me and you lose everything in the cold dark abyss of your room, you can use the app to make the tracker ring, like this. And I found it so I can make it stop. So this tracker card fits nicely right here. I can slide it into the back pouch like this and it goes in there nice and snug. You can use promo code Bryce or click on this link in the description below to get up to 40% off on their site. I wouldn't mind getting one of these as a gift for the holidays. That concludes part two of my Squid Game questions answered series. If you have any unanswered questions about Squid Game, let me know in the comments because I could potentially answer them in my next video. If you want to see more Squid Game videos just like this one, subscribe to this channel and to my shorts channel because that's a thing now. By the way, who else is excited for season two? It's happening. It's happening. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next Squid Game video.